Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Therapy the Podcast. I am Tamiko Foster, licensed cosmetologist and your on-demand therapist. I'm super excited for today's conversation. I'm joined by my beautiful client and close friend, Lauren. Hi, Lauren. How Hi, are you? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Good. Thank you for joining us. Of course. <laughs> okay, so today's topic, you guys, is a juicy one. Um, so a lot of the girls have been coming into the salon, getting their hair done, and sharing their dating stories, dating experience. And I'm going to list a few, and let's see if you guys can guess what these, all, these women all have in common. Eve, Serena Williams, Chili from TLC, Tika Sumter, Jody Turner Smith. Any guesses? Any guesses? Yes. We're gonna talk about interracial dating. So today's topic is called Twist Out. Are you down with the swirl? All right, you ready, Lauren? I'm ready. All right. Let's get, <laughs> let's get into it because it's such a juicy topic. Um, okay, so there seems to be like this trend of like more black women open to dating outside of their race, right? And we see more celebrities that go, you know are finding love, you know, outside of the black community, right? Yeah. And I feel like traditionally it was a very taboo thing, you know, we just kind of like stick within your culture, within your race. Um, but now we're just seeing, you know, all different races. It doesn't even just like black and white, it's like Asian or Hispanic or whatever, right? So I know you are in an interracial <laughs> relationship. I am. So, um, so tell us how you guys met, like how did he approach you? Um, and is this your first interracial dating experience? Well, me and my fiance, actually, okay. <laughs> um, we met online. We met on Hinge, um, and this was actually during the pandemic. So, like, this is, like, peak pandemic when yeah. all the restaurants were closed. Like, we weren't outside. It was yeah. just, like, you know, we we're all inside. Like, okay, <laughs> what is going on in life? And, I mean, he, you know, obviously saw my profile. He re he said some cute like little like joke about the fact that I love pizza, um, which I do. Um, and yeah, like I feel like for him, he was just very intentional. Like he was just like, hey, I'd love to have a conversation with you. Uh, would you like to exchange numbers? Yeah. And then after we had our first phone conversation, he was just like, well, I would love to meet you. I know everything's closed. So like, how about we meet on Santa Monica Beach um, for our first date? So. Yeah, I mean, it was just very organic in the sense of, like, how he asked me out. It was just very, like, no no playing games, no, like, talking and texting on the app for, like, weeks or months at a time. Yeah. It was just very much, like, very hey, I'd like, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. yeah, we met that way. We ended up meeting on Santa Monica Beach for our first date. Aww. And, I mean, honestly, like, it was just... You, I mean, at that point, we were only able to really get to know each other by talking, so yeah, yeah. I actually thought that was like a really great way to change it up a bit from yeah. being wine and dine and all of that versus like actually really getting to know the person. Yeah. Absolutely. For sure. And it's so funny, speaking about Hinge, it's, uh, leave, a, leave an H in the comment if you've been on Hinge before <laughs> and have some Hinge stories. <laughs> um, but yeah, it can, it can get exhausting, like just having multiple conversations. And like, you know, even though Hinge is so great about, you know, narrowing your searches and, you know, if you want to do by race or age or location, it still can be a little bit overwhelming. Absolutely. But I have noticed as well, it's like, you know, like the other races, they do, I think they feel more confident, you know, online. Do you feel like he would have approached you like out in person? I feel like no guys I, approach you out in person. Right. Like I... Knowing what I know about him, he probably would not have because he's so yeah. shy and like kind of a little bit more um, introverted in the sense like he's not just gonna like, hi, my name is yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. whatever. <laughs> um, but I think because when you set your settings on Hinge, like if somebody's profile comes up, you know that they're interested in that. So yeah. like the fact that I came up for him, I'm pretty sure he was like, okay, well, okay. Yeah, like yeah. she's like, you know obviously like down to like date outside her race right. like all of that so um I think it does help a little bit of the courage to approach somebody um on an online platform versus in person yeah um especially during that time when we weren't even able to really be out wow. so it was just kind of like okay well how are we going to be yeah. people yeah I feel like the numbers of online dating just skyrocketed absolutely <laughs> absolutely <laughs> So is this your first interracial dating experience? Um, no. So growing up, I dated everybody. Um, 
Asian, Hispanic, black, white. Um, but this is obviously like my first time being engaged and he is white. So um, yeah, this would be like my, my first like really serious relationship, absolutely. Nice, okay, next question. What attracted you to him the most? Um, his intentionality, like there was, there was never a moment in our relationship where I wondered, where is this going? Like, what is he thinking? Like, are we really together? Like, it was just so consistent and I just felt so comfortable. Um, and I hadn't had that before. I always had like that anxiety of like, okay, where is this going? Like, what's going on? Like, you know, is this progressing? Like, what does he think? Yeah, and it was just- like, Is he not? Is he gonna call? Is absolutely. He not? Is he gonna text back in an hour? Exactly. In two minutes? Yeah. Right, am I gonna get that good morning text or am I not? Yeah. Like, yeah, no, he just was super consistent the entire time. And I, that was something that I really made a priority of what I wanted the next time I got into yeah. a relationship or started dating um, is that I was with somebody that didn't make me wonder mm -hmm. or confused. Or, yeah, question yourself or the situation. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, okay, next question. Did you have any hesitations about dating outside of your race? Um, honestly, yeah, sure. Um, obviously, there are things with dating outside your race that you have to deal with, you know, um, not everybody is as welcoming, at, you know, for, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I remember there was a time when we were in Palm Springs and we had been together for like a year and a half and we're just out walking and this guy, like, he just gave us like the most dirty looks and it was just like, okay, well, all right. Yeah. Um, so, you know, before him, yeah, like there are things that you want to avoid, right? Like it's easier to deal with if somebody looks like you, right. you know, it's like just, you know, the experience of it is easier. Um, I mean, I'm always open to having a conversation, so it wasn't even really like, oh, am I, I don't want to have these difficult conversations with another person, like I just want somebody like me. I actually love differences like I just feel like I want to grow as a person I want to see different perspectives of life so yeah. that part never bothered me but it was more so like do I want to deal with going to a place where I'm only like you know what I'm saying yeah, like that kind yeah, of thing yeah I yeah. agree and you know what's funny a lot of because um, we've been literally having a lot of girls come in and like oh I'm, I'm getting engaged or I'm married or we've been together you know for this long mm -hmm. and so you know, I just started to pay attention. I'm like, oh, this is like a thing right now. Like, yeah. the girls are out here <laughs> yeah. with the white zeddy. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a thing, you know? And so when I talk to my other clients about it who are dating, I'm like, well, you know, you should be open because we've been seeing a lot of people have success, mm -hmm. you know, just being open to everything, right? Absolutely. So it's not to, like, um, say you cannot date, you know, within your race or continue Absolutely. to date black men, but... You know, sometimes love can look different than what you think it should look like. Right? Absolutely. But what I always hear them say is like, I can't do that. Like, I don't want to have to explain things to them, right? But I think, you, I don't think anybody's been in a relationship where they didn't have to explain something to a man, black, white, purple, pink, or yellow, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So do you feel, have you ever had a moment where you did have to kind of explain something about like black culture or like you know like where you, all the time it was new to him all the time so a little back story about my fiance he's british so he's from england and i'm from texas so <laughs> just imagine that right all on its own we are always having conversations yeah. about cultural things yeah. hey this is what this means this is why this person says this and i think that's why i love him so much is that he asks he genuinely wants to know. Yeah. Like if you sit and talk to him, he will ask you 2,000 questions and you'll be like, oh my God, like, <laughs> this man never stops. But I appreciate that because he wants to learn. And one of the things he always says is he's like, I've learned so much being with you and I appreciate it. And I, you know, it's just been such a learning experience yeah. for me. Um, because let's not, you know, kid ourselves, he's a white man and he hasn't had to see those outside things. Mm -hmm. But I appreciate the fact that he wants to know and he asks questions to really truly understand like my perspective. Yeah. There's never been a conversation that we've had that I've been uncomfortable or felt like 
he didn't care or you know understand me he's always willing to listen and learn and i really really appreciate that that's beautiful so do you think because i feel like you know him being from london right mm -hmm. from the uk there's already a cultural difference like so a white man a white man in america versus a white man from the uk is totally different like, absolutely have you dated a white american before yes i've dated a white american before funny enough <laughs> This was in high school, and I mean, I've gone out on dates with other white men, but this is like somebody I was actually in a relationship with, and his parents actually made him break up with me because I was black. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, like literally. And we're still friends, like we're cool. Like, I mean, it was a shock kind of thing, but... Was this in Texas, right? Yeah, this is in Texas. Yeah. This is like, we literally were neighbors. That's the funny thing. It's like we lived around the corner from each other, and... Yeah, like his family just didn't approve of that. And wow. yeah, but if you, I think about it, it's so different, like a white man in Texas versus a white man in California versus a white man in the UK. Absolutely. Like it can look so different in yes. so many ways. And so then you realize, okay, these are just people yes. at the end of the day. Absolutely, know? absolutely. Yeah. And it's all based on experience and what you're used to seeing. Um, obviously living in California, you're a little bit more liberal. Yeah. Um, him living in the UK, like it's way more diverse. Like he's been around so many cultures. Um, and I know people hate that phrase and it's like, I don't see color, but like he genuinely, I just think that he just looks at me like his fiance. He just knows I'm black and yeah. he's just like, I know her experience is different, but he doesn't look at me like a label. Yeah. It's just like, he's like, I, this is yeah. my fiance. Yeah. I love her. Exactly. Like kind of thing. I love that. Okay. Um, so what is your, when you guys are out, I mean, you shared about Palm Springs, mm -hmm. but like. When you're here, you know, just in like LA area, what is your experience when you guys are out? Like, do you get looks or comments or, you know? Yeah, I mean, and that's from all races, right? We've gotten looks from black men, we've gotten looks from white women, like we've gotten looks from everybody, right? Um, I think I'm just at the point in my life, I'm so happy and I feel like, you know, I'm with my person. I tune it out a lot more than him. Um, he notices it a lot more than I do now. What um, is his reaction? He struggles with it, I'm not gonna lie. Like he, I think it's more of a protective thing that he has for me and he doesn't understand. Like yeah, why do like, people care? Like what yeah. is, like, what yeah. do, like we're strangers to you. Like why yeah. are you going out of your way to like put out bad energy? Yeah. So um, yeah, he struggles with it a lot more than me. I. I can actually deal with it a lot easier than yeah. him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it doesn't bother me. It literally doesn't. Like, yeah. to me, I have the mantra of like, it says more about them than it does me. Yeah. And I just keep it pushing. Yeah. <laughs> Period. Okay. <laughs> like nobody's paying these bills. Like I probably won't see you again. Um, yeah. Exactly. It's just like your opinion doesn't matter. Yeah. So, and you guys obviously you are engaged now. So your families have you guys met each other's family, have the families met each other, how's that process going? So, we're a little different. He's met my mom and sister okay. um, several, several times, but his dad passed when he was younger, my dad passed when I was younger, so we both don't have fathers. Um, he's a little bit older, so his mom is actually in a nursing home right now, like, so just her mental capacity, like, she's yeah. just older, yeah, um, really. so, it's just different, it's different. Okay. Um, because of the pandemic we didn't get to go to the UK because it just was yeah. still a little dicey there um, so I actually haven't met his family um, I haven't met his sister or um, his other siblings um, but I've met like his core group of friends here yeah. um, that he considers his family um, I mean they're now my family so yeah you know. beautiful. Okay, and I want to ask this, and just to be clear, this is so not to compare, but what are some of the differences that you notice dating a white man versus dating a black man? Not to compare, but <laughs> <are> observing. <laughs> <laughs> Make an observation. Right. Um, from my own personal experience, I just feel like it's... <laughs> I know. And it's hard because it's like... You're not generalizing everybody. It's just yeah. like you're being hyper focused on what your experience has been. And if I'm doing that, it's just, 
I just feel like he's a lot more committal in certain areas that I want in my life. And I feel like when I was dating certain black men, it was just not as a priority for them. Um, like, I'm from the South. Like, I want to get married. Like, I want, like, that family unit. And I just felt like some of the black men that I dated it wasn't a priority like it was just like i just want to date multiple women yeah i'm not really trying to settle down right um, just vibing it's yes like yeah it's <laughs> like it's like yeah and i think for him personally he was just so like i'm just not into doing he's like i don't like dating he's like i you know, I want to find somebody. I'm very intentional about that. I believe in marriage. Like, he just, we aligned so much on the things that we wanted, our values. Yeah. And I felt like that was the biggest difference, to be honest. Yeah, you know, um, and this is just what I've heard from other clients, is that the emotional availability yes, is absolutely. a lot more present, right? Yes. And it's not a dig on black men, because I think just as a culture in general, um, we both had to kind of push past our traumas, you know? Absolutely. And black men don't have as many spaces to yes to heal and deal with their trauma. And so that's like one of the biggest things I've heard. It's just like the emotional support, availability, and just like, um, what's the word? I mean, yeah, like you just, it's just more open. Yeah, no, I completely understand. That's why that's such a hard question to answer because it's so nuanced right because we all have a past we all have generational traumas right. that we're bringing with us into relationships so it's not a dig per se it's just there are things that we still in our own community as black women and black men have yeah. to work through For sure. and my fiance is just present with that because he hasn't had those traumas yeah. right so he is able to be a lot more emotionally present right. and available right. um and it's just you know one of those things where it's like you know i love that now we're talking more about therapy and mental health and sure. you know i love that people like michael b jordan and jonathan majors friendships and just like how they're just like their brotherhood is now being more like yeah. socially accepted like like hey like i love you like yeah. and that's not yeah. you know yeah. it's just like more emotion and, and being yeah. free with who you are and yeah. your friends and family and all of that so i think that the more we have those conversations and push past a lot of those traumas and things i think that's where we'll see a lot more emotional available men period, yeah, period. Um, in our culture and just like in general. Yeah, I agree. And I think like even how, um, you know, people, we've had the conversation uh, for so many years about black men dating mm -hmm. outside their race. And I think people assumed that it was so much about like, oh, he's got a white woman. Mm -hmm. So it's like this trophy thing or it's mm -hmm. a, you know, a class thing, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But now that I see black women dating outside of their race, which, you know, I've seen on the internet, it's like <laughs> yeah. a huge debate, like, oh, it's a, it's a problem when you do yeah. it, when I do it, you know. Totally. Right, yeah. But then it makes me think, you know, maybe a part of their story as well was this emotional availability or this, like, maybe emotional tenderness that they were, you know, maybe seeking, I don't know. Absolutely, you know what I mean? yes. Like, I yeah, know. fair. I mean, as black women, we a lot of times get those labels, right, of being hard or um, even aggressive or loud or those, you know, stigmas that yeah. are just general terms that aren't true, obviously. The, the, the heavy and, eye roll. Yeah, the uh, heavy eye roll. As I as eye roll. <laughs> um, but no, like, and, it, you know, it's all based on personal experience, exactly. right? Like, it's not negating what somebody else's experience has been dating a black woman and then they're dating a white woman now or somebody of a different uh, race or culture, you know, that kind of thing. So it's like, it's it's really hard to, like, generalize. Mm -hmm. It's it really is yeah. based on the specific experience past childhood upbringing general uh, generational trauma like all yeah. of those things just really do come into play i agree um so what this was really important for me to ask even though it seems like it's a newer trend for black women to date outside of their race um what do you think is like really one of the major reasons 
why it's becoming more popular or we're seeing it more? Like, do you think with, you know, just our world and our consciousness changing and shifting, more black women are just open? Or what do you think is really like one of the root causes? Well, I think several things. Like, I think it's a spiritual thing as well as just more of a, almost like a self uh, awareness thing. Um, I feel like, like I mentioned, like therapy, mental health, all those things are now being talked about more in a way. And I feel like there's so many, I see so many of my black girlfriends going to therapy. I've yeah. been in therapy for most of my adult life. And I feel like now with that, you're healing a lot of the pieces that maybe had you thinking a certain way. And I think now a lot of those walls are being broken and more people are being open and saying like, yeah, like I love black men, but you know what? I'm gonna be open in general. Like I was, I am open to receive the love that I know God has for me. And I, that's where I feel like the spirituality part comes from. Yeah. Um, but I just feel like a lot of women are just like really like loving themselves more and really realizing that there's more to life and yeah. happiness and love is just the most important thing. And yeah. if it just doesn't look maybe the way that we all thought it, thought it would yeah. maybe <laughs> look, um, that's okay. That's okay. I love that. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people, like you said, like on this, when I think about when I'm in hot yoga or even like, you know, when you're in church or something and you really do just see a, a person, a spirit, an individual, and it's not about race or class or you know status or anything. It's just like this is John in front of me. This is Sarah in front of me. This is Keisha. Like whoever it is in front of you, and you just take the person from face value. And I think especially after the pandemic, when we realize like all the rules are fake, then you realize like oh like. I need to do what makes me feel good and what makes me feel happy, you know, so. Absolutely, and I, and I think that you brought up a really good point. I was gonna say that as well. Like, I really feel like the pandemic, for a lot of people, shook us a lot, right? Yeah. And we're like, wow, all of this doesn't really matter. Right. And <laughs> I can literally be stuck inside for the rest of, like, you, you don't know. Yeah. And it was just such an unexpected, necessary yeah. slowdown. Yeah. And I think for a lot of people, they did the work to unlearn some things, to reconcile some traumas, or just maybe some like unhealthy habits. I mean, I definitely did. Like, I really got into spirituality, um, therapy, like all those things super hard because I was just like, you know what? Like, while I have this time, I'm gonna be the best me that I or figure out how to be the best me I can. And like, so when I'm outside, I'm like, wow, okay, I'm actually like living and like, you know, that whole thing. So yeah. I, I do think that the pandemic did have a huge, huge factor in the sense of like, it really made women and men also um, have to, you know, reconcile a lot of things with themselves. With yourself, yeah. yeah. It was a lot of time for self. It was a lot of reflection time. It was a lot of quiet time. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, wherever you go, there you are. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you're in the house and there's breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and it's just on repeat, you're like, okay, well, yeah, I gotta heal some of this stuff because a lot of us were so busy, busy, busy. Yeah. And it's like, what what do you do when somebody tells you to just be still? Yes. You know. Um, Okay, so I want to go back because this is one of my favorite stories. You guys have to hear this story. So can you tell us about your uh, proposal? <laughs> and, like, it's so good. Yeah, so it's my favorite story to tell because it was just, <laughs> it was bomb. It's so beautiful. Um, so this past Christmas, we went to Lake Tahoe for, um, for Christmas and we stayed at like the Ritz Carlton. It was just so beautiful. I mean, he knows how much I love Christmas. Like my birthday's in December as well. So I'm just like that holiday girl that just like, I yeah. need everything to look <laughs> Christmas. Like I need the lights, I need the snow, I need all of it. Yeah. So he planned this like super wonderful, like romantic trip. And yeah, we were there for like a couple days and then Christmas rolled around and there wasn't anything really out of the ordinary. I mean, we yeah. woke up, you know, exchanged gifts, went to lunch, yeah. and he was just like, you know, I talked to the concierge, and you know, they told me uh, I should, we should really drive down to the lake and see it this time of year. It's really beautiful, and I was like, okay, sure. Yeah. So we drive down, and I mean, it was just incredible. Like we walk out, and I hear music playing in the background, but it's a public 
park or like lake so I just figured okay other families maybe yeah. here um, and then he's just like do you notice anything and I'm just like yeah there's music and it's faint though but it's like you can hear music right. and he's like do you hear what's playing and a couple weeks prior he had asked me what my favorite love song is and it's this Otis Redding song called Cigarettes and Coffee. Like I just, it's just, I love Otis Redding. And he had a plane and I immediately started crying. Aww. But I looked down and there's like rose petals everywhere on the snow. And it's like this humongous aisle that led to the lake. And at the end was like champagne and it was just incredible. And yeah, he posed there. It was just really beautiful. Yeah. So what did you, were you kind of expecting it? Did you know? Were you just thinking like? I mean, <laughs> I knew. Um, but you know what's coming soon. Yes, I didn't know in the manner of which. Yeah. And I made sure not to because I was just like, I want the experience to be really special. I don't want to ruin it. You know, I'm pretty sure it's something he worked hard on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you knew it's coming, but because we talked about it and you know, he's just like that intentional guy, he has a plan. Um, but the way he did it, it blew me away. Like I would have never guessed that was how it was gonna happen and it was just absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Um, okay, George, I wanna edit this back because I meant to ask something. Then we'll just keep yeah, going. Totally. Um, one of the other things that I hear black women say about why they, they are, you know, don't, don't want to date white men or other men is that they don't wanna feel like a fetish. You know, they want to be loved for them and not like, oh, does he just want me to be, I forget the term that they use, but just like, um, like a token. Yeah. Or, or like, his, yeah, or, yeah, or like his, like his black girl fetish thing or like mm -hmm. whatever. Right. Um, what would you say to that? Like, because I, I definitely have seen people experience that where, you know, it's <laughs> whatever they're, yeah. they've experienced. Right. But I mean, honestly, it kind of goes back to what we talked about with my fiance asking questions and really wanting to understand. I think there's a vibe that you get and I think that as an intelligent woman, you'll be able to tell if somebody genuinely wants to be with you, who you are, versus just what it looks like. Yeah. Um, and with him, my fiance, like it really was apparent that like he wanted to know everything about me and my experience yeah my experiences my perspectives and he really was curious like not even with me my mom my sister like he will talk them to death and my sister is an introvert and she's just like <laughs> he asks a lot of questions but I love that because it shows that like he's invested in understanding and I think that when it comes to like those that just kind of look at it as a fetish I think you can pick up on that energy very fast I think it's very surface level I think it's very like shallow and I think as women you'll be able to tell yeah and it's a certain type of guy absolutely that that, like, absolutely that anything where they you know yeah it's a certain type of yeah. guy that just absolutely. makes you feel like a piece of meat absolutely you know? like, you know yeah this checkbox like oh is she this is she that is she this absolutely you know? so, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay, perfect. I'm so glad we had this conversation. Yes. So can you tell our listeners where they can find you on social media? Um, yes. So I am on Instagram and TikTok uh, at Lauren Taylor Style, all one word. Um, and I also have like pictures and videos of that engagement. So you will be able to see like the rose petals and like everything. It's stunning. He, he did such a good job. Um, yeah, you can find me there. I do a lot of fashion, uh, self-care, uh, travel. <laughs> Okay, and if there was one piece of advice or an affirmation or any like just um, quote that you want to like share with our listeners. Absolutely. The biggest quote that I always tell myself, especially when I was on the journey of finding love, it was just like, I deserve love. Um, and I would say that to myself all the time. Um, I really truly deserve love. And yeah, I think that that just like feeds your spirit, it waters it, it yeah. helps it grow, and yeah. it helps you attract like truly like the love that you're meant to have in yeah. your life, no matter what that looks to like. To be open to absolutely, love, right? Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us. You guys make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Awesome.